Hi, my name is Adam Gilmore from Demodelize Solutions. Today I'm going to demonstrate creating an employee dimension using Demodelo Architect. So let's get started. I've created a Demodelo Architect project uh, that we can use as a starting point for our demonstration. In the project I've already got some dimensions, some staging tables and a single fact table. Let's take a look at the source tables for the employee dimension. So uh, we have this little demonstration database called Human Resources. And in that database is an employee table, which is a fairly standard employee table with employee codes and last names, first names, etc. Uh, also of note is the user ID. And we have a positions table, which records the position of the employee and uh, the person that they report to or the position that they report to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new connection to our human resources database. So I give it a name, press the configure button, and set the connection properties to the human resources database. Just save that. And we also create a source system which is a bit more metadata about the uh, human resources connection or source system. The most important part here is the source system abbreviation, which we use to differentiate uh, the tables from the human resources uh, source system from other source systems in the staging database. Right, so next is to create a, a staging table. In this case, we're going to create the employee staging table. So the quickest way to create a staging table is, is to import the uh, columns from the source system. And as you can see, we've imported the column names and the data types. The next step is to create the actual extract itself. Uh, we choose a full extract pattern, choose which uh, source system the data comes from, the data comes from the employee table, and the system, the model architect, automatically maps the source columns to the staging columns. And we're also going to define a positions staging table. We'll go through the same process of importing the columns from the position table in the source system. And then define the extract. Again, the extract pattern is full extract. The source system is the HR system. The table for the uh, source of the extract is position. And that's the staging of the two tables that we need for the employee dimension. OK, so our next step is to actually create the employee dimension. So uh, I give it a name, employee, and then a friendly name, employee again. Again, you can uh, import the attributes from the source system. So in this case, it's from the HR source system and the employee table. It brings on all the attributes uh, and we can go through and delete those attributes that we don't want in our dimension. You'll note that uh, we've also identified what the business key is. Now I'm going to add some new columns. Uh, so these will be the position columns. And I'll give this attribute a type 2 because we want to keep a history of when they change position and also the position description. Note that the data type here is varchar50. Okay, we save that. And the next step is to create the ETL for the dimension. So we give the uh, transformation a name and choose the pattern, which is type 1 and 2. Now we need to define what is the source for this uh, dimension. And in this case, it's the, the primary staging table is the employee table. The primary staging table sets the grain for the dimension. And then we want to add in a join to our position table because we're also going to get some data from the position staging table for this dimension. 
we need to define the join on clause. So that's the join from our employee staging table to our position staging table. We need to define how incoming rows from the staging table are matched to existing rows in the dimension. This is how we know whether they exist or not. In this case, I'm creating a, an expression to do the mapping. So really the ETL that's generated uses this, these columns and these, these definitions to determine whether the incoming row already exists in our dimension and then takes the appropriate action. Next step is to define the mapping between the staging columns and the attributes of the dimension. Uh, the quickest way is to use the auto match, which auto matches on name. And then you can do it manually in this case. Now this warning is telling me that there is a problem with the data types between the attribute and the staging table uh, column. So I need to define an expression. I need to cast or convert the staging column into the same type as in the attribute. For dimensions, the expression is just simply TSQL and we can enter a expression that converts the staging table type to the required type of the attribute. Save that. And now we can generate and deploy the data warehouse. So to do that, we choose the model O, generate and deploy, generate and deploy all. And deploy all will generate both the staging and data warehouse databases all the staging tables, the data warehouse tables, and also the SSIS packages to execute the ETL. So we'll just let that run through. Okay, it's generating the uh, configuration files for the SSIS. Now it's generating some SSIS packages. An important thing to note is that uh, you can click on any one of these uh, links in this generation results window and it will open up the appropriate um, viewer for that. So if you click on a .sql file, it'll open up SQL Server Management Studio. If you click on uh, SSIS project, it'll open up the SSIS project in uh, Visual Studio. So let's try that right now. We'll go and have a look at one of the SQL files that it has generated. And we'll take a look at the warehouse tables SQL. Now this is the SQL that uh, generates and updates any data warehouse database tables. This code is designed to do a non-destructive uh, synchronization between the project and the data warehouse database tables, creating new tables, deleting any tables, or soft deleting any tables that aren't there, etc. Updating columns, data types, names, etc. Uh, we'll also take a look at the SSIS project that's been generated. Okay, that opens in Visual Studio 2010. And we'll have a look at the Transform Dimension Employee Package, which is the ETL for our employee dimension. Okay, so you can see here we've got uh, the control flow, which has a number of updates statements we do all bulk updates for performance purposes and then probably the bulk of the work is done in this transform uh, for example so this is the source of our transform and you can probably see that that kind of matches what we've uh, all the columns and the um, expressions that were put into uh, the model architect this is the lookup component which compares incoming staging rows to existing dimension rows to determine if the row already exists in the dimension or not. This is our insert, our mappings into our insert, into our dimension, etc. So it's a fairly sophisticated uh, pattern that's created and it's designed to uh, handle all kinds of different uh, dimension scenarios like uh, updates, soft deletes, reinstatements, etc. OK, 
Okay, and finally, let's go have a look at the actual data warehouse that has been generated. And we can see here we have Demodelo staging, Demodelo 17 staging, which is our staging database. We're staging in our different uh, staging tables, HR underscore employee, etc. And we have our data warehouse. Uh, we have the employee dimension. And you can see it's got a employee S key and all the various attributes that we've uh, defined for the dimension. And we'll select on that. You see there's no data in here. Okay, so the next step is to actually run the batch, the ETL batch. So we can do that through Demodelo, selecting Demodelo batch. And our batch will run. First, it's doing all the extracts. The batch process is controlled by a very simple workflow file that you can edit. Uh, it contains a set of phases and tasks. Phases being the extract phase, the transformed dimensions phase, the transformed facts phase. You can also add your own uh, phases and tasks. So you might add a, a process queued phase, or you might add um, a task which executes a stored procedure, a custom stored procedure. Okay, so the batch is complete and I've uh, selected all the data from the employee table again. And here you can see, obviously the employee table or the employee dimension has been populated. So uh, our batch has uh, executed correctly. So that's a brief demonstration of creating a fairly simple uh, dimension. Our next video will uh, concentrate on parent-child hierarchies and also how to create a smart key dimension. Thanks for watching.